Namaskar. Thank you so much. I have been, um, well, I grew up an atheist. I was an atheist for the first 33 years of uh, my life. And then um, I had a um, spontaneous uh, spiritual awakening a couple of years ago. And ever since then, um, it's really felt like I've been living a, um, like a double life. And that's really true of pretty much every dimension of my life. Friends, family, coworkers um, wouldn't understand what I'm going through. And so it's um, been kind of a lonely journey. There's been a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression that I've been dealing with. I felt very withdrawn from my day to day. I'm a business owner. It's been really hard for me to find the motivation to you know, get up and keep going in and going through the motions. Um, and I'm just really struggling with how do I sort of bring these two worlds together and um, you know, find a place of joy and happiness again and know that I'm engaging with the world in the way that the world needs me to, but also in a way that makes me feel happy and whole. You know, in the beginning of this process of a spiritual awakening, and it can be different for different people, some people may call just seeing something unusual a spiritual awakening, others may actually have the experience of soul or source, another may have an enlightenment experience. With each person it's different, and what they call a spiritual experience is different. What definitely definitely will help, is not to believe that the people around you are not capable of understanding what's happening. Sometimes you would be surprised how many people in the world actually are open to these ideas. It's just that when one person is afraid of speaking about their experience or even just being relaxed about it and normal about it, the other will not know about it, but will have probably also had a similar experience, or be open to it conceptually. So your first step, as far as the people around you, is not to trumpet your experience, but to be clear about it, to stand with yourself. If you've seen a green moon on Thursday morning, then you've seen a green moon. And if another hasn't seen it, it doesn't mean that the moon isn't green. It's green for you and you better stand up for that. Because the more you stand up for your spiritual experiences, the more those experiences will support you. And the more you believe that you have to protect yourself from everyone else, the less you'll have support from those very experiences that actually are strengthening you. You don't have to trumpet them around, that's not what I'm saying. But if you've had an experience where, let's say, you've suddenly felt oneness with everyone and everything, you may believe that no one else would understand, but they may be able to accept that your moon is green. People are more accepting and more wide and tender-hearted than one normally wants to believe. I would not go and trumpet it to everyone, but I would not run away from the experience. And I would stand for it and live with it, and be clear about it with everyone around. Take it or leave it. If they have respect for you, and they understand it, then they will be there. Even if they don't agree that the Moon is green, at least you can agree that there is a Moon. And that's already something. You can't give in there, you have to stand straight with what you've experienced. I mean, unless you start saying, I saw little goblins running around in the garden, honey, and you know, we need to get a net to catch them, then we're talking something else. I don't believe that that's where you're coming from. You know, it's non-negotiable. As far as not having the motivation to do business, that's because you're running away from the experience in its social context. Again, you don't have to go to all your employees and tell them that they now have an enlightened being as their boss, that's not what it's about. But if you stand strong with your experience, 
you will be able to have the joy of running that business. The point is, what do you do with the business? Because you are running a business because you have to put food on the table and maybe four wheels on the road. And then, on top of that, what do you do with that on top of that? What do you use your money for? How do you actually bring that energy into the world to support the world? That is what will strengthen you. The more you invest in your spiritual path and in your spiritual journey, in your case, because you're not doing social service, you've come on a spiritual path. Some people do that in the world of social service. We call it Samaj Seva and spiritual service is Adhyatmik Seva. That's where you then put your energy, your money, your thoughts, your emotions, your physical strength, your transformative creative strength, all of that goes into that. And then the business makes sense. You see no sense in it because of what you're doing. You're not standing with your experience. You're not expressing it with strength. You know, that has to develop. Don't be afraid of anyone. Why should you be? I mean, if someone doesn't understand you, then they have to go and understand someone else. You have to be very tough about that. It's, as I said, non negotiable. And then you'll see very soon, once you have clarity with the people around you, once you have decided what you do with your energy, with your money, with your body, with your, with your emotions, if you invest it in the right direction, you're just going to be a very joyous being, you know? That's what it is about. You don't want to be this unhappy person all the time. But it won't change if you don't make a very very strong decision. Your experiences are not madness. You don't look mad to me. You look quite sane, actually. And it's all right to stand up for what you believe in, what you experience. And maybe the people around you would be interested to hear it, you know? Maybe it sort of strikes a chord in them and awakens something in them. I'm not talking about proselytizing and preaching, but just sharing, without fear. Nodding is not enough, you also have to do it. <laughs> Thank you. That's really helpful, I appreciate it. It sounds like I need to figure out how to embody my truths in a way that works for me, but is not, um, like you said, not trumpeting anything but is, is also coming from a place of strength and not being afraid, not having to walk away from an environment because I don't want to rock the boat or... If you don't rock the boat, life will rock that boat. And when life rocks the boat, then you have a problem. So it's better that you take that boat in hand and rock it around a little bit and test the waters. Thank you. Thank you.